Last night, I, uh, I called my friends in Phoenix, Arizona, Bill and Claudia McAuliffe. I had visited them uh, for a week in January and had married them over 20 years ago. And, uh, well, uh, they said, you know, we, we'd love to talk a little longer, but we, we have a barbecue to go to. And uh, it was 82 degrees in Phoenix. And uh, so my parting shot was, don't come home until I tell you. <laughs> yeah. So they live, they live here in New Hampshire in the winter in, uh, in uh, Arizona. But you know, Arizona is a perfect image of what the readings are all about this morning. There's always a theme, and Arizona is a desert. It's a desert there. And, uh, you know... Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, President Teddy Roosevelt, he was instrumental in getting irrigation into the desert, into the southwest. There's the Roosevelt Dam, the Roosevelt Reservoir. And uh, what you see is extraordinary. You, you see with this irrigation, uh, the beautiful green grass, the palm trees, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, uh, gorgeous golf courses, all because of the miracle of irrigation. So if you went to the scriptures, you see Moses in the desert, in the Sinai, with the Hebrew people, and they're thirsty, and they're hungry, and they're complaining, and Moses is told to strike the rock, and the water will, will flow, the irrigation. The desert will bloom, the water giving life to the desert. Keep that in mind, water giving life. And then, of course, in the gospel. Jesus is thirsty. He's thirsting. And he asks the Samaritan woman for water. And then he says, I will give you water that will gush up to eternal life. I will give you this living water. What he's really talking about is the Holy Spirit. That's what he's talking about. This living water, this water gushing up is the Holy Spirit. And then if you look at the epistles, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. There's the theme, folks. As water gives life to the desert, so God is pouring His love, His Holy Spirit, His amazing grace. They're all the same thing. Grace, Holy Spirit, the love of God being poured into us, giving us life. Not just human life. As great as that is, it is giving us a share in the very life of God. That's what it's all about. The news cannot get any better than that. That we literally share in the life of God, that His Holy Spirit lives within us and is gushing up giving us eternal life. And it's not something that happens later on. It's happening right now. It's a now experience. This, uh, this gospel, the Samaritans parted from the Jewish people 500 years before Jesus was born. Ten of the Jewish tribes left the faith, they intermarried, and uh, built their own temple. And so there was a division. There was a division between the Samaritans and the Jewish people. And so they really didn't talk to each other. And for Jesus to be talking to a Samaritan, reaching out to this woman, extraordinary. Uh, she didn't get along very well with men, had trouble with men. And she didn't get along very well with women either. And, and we know that because every word of John's gospel is important. It was about noon, the hottest time of the day. Well, the other women would have come to Jacob's well early in the morning when it was cool or at dusk. But this woman came when nobody else would be there because nobody in town wanted anything to do with her. She was shunned. This woman was in pain. 
She was in pain. And, and she was looking for happiness. Just like all of us. She was looking for God. You know what that is? God, God draws us to Himself. He's made us for Himself, Augustine says, and only God can fulfill us. Only God can bring us happiness. And so she was looking for God, looking for happiness and in the wrong places. She was in pain. But we've got to know, Jesus reveals the invisible God. Jesus is the face of God the Father. The Son reveals to us what the Father is like. The Father's pure spirit. But if we can see God made visible in Jesus His Son, God made visible, in the face of Christ, we see God the Father. We know what God is like. And if this is what God is like, we've got nothing to worry about. We do not have to be afraid of God. Here He is reaching out to a Samaritan. And even the disciples are amazed that He's talking to a Samaritan. And He's reaching out to this woman. A rabbi never talked to a woman in public like that. She was in pain and He goes wherever the pain is. And notice, He didn't shame her. He didn't reject her. He didn't condemn her. He changed her life. He changed her life. And she went into the town to these people who wanted nothing to do with her and said, I think I found the Messiah. I think I found him. And then brought the whole town out to meet him. We've got to get that. God is approachable. Don't be afraid to approach God. And He takes the initiative. He's the one who said, give me a drink of water. He wants to befriend us. He wants to be intimate with us. He knows us each by name. He wants to give each of you His Holy Spirit welling up within you. He wants to share His life with you, not only in heaven after death, but right now. This is all happening right now. And this is why this gospel is used in Lent, which is the preparation for the RCIA. Because everybody has a story. Each of us has his or her own story. And God's a part of that story. And He wants to invite us into His life. He wants to share His life with us. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of God. Never be afraid. He, he wants to save us. He loves us. He cares about us. And in Jesus, you see, compassion revealed, patience revealed. He had time for this woman. Uh, marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. This is the God that Christ revealed. We're very blessed. God has blessed us. God has blessed us in many ways. We're very blessed especially this year um, with those who are coming to Christ, uh, coming to the church, coming to the sacrament. Uh, right now, there are 12 people in the RCIA, like the 12 apostles. Eight adults and, and four teenagers, young people, younger than me. Uh, and, but, but now, and... and uh, you can start this journey any time, you know. You don't have to tell I'm going to wait till September. You can start this journey any time. Uh, and everybody comes in uh, at a, at a different, uh, with a different story. Each of us has a unique story. Some are baptized. Some are not baptized. Some are Christians already. Some are not. Uh, so everybody is, is on, a, on a different trail or a, or a different journey. He has a beautiful journey with Christ. So at the Easter Vigil, we have four adults and, and four teenagers coming into the church, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist. And then we think in June there will be four more at that, ready at that time to enter the, the church. But these are the people we pray for. And we pray for the RCIA. And we thank God for them. We give them our support. And if you know of anybody who is thirsty for God, 
who is thirsty for Jesus Christ, who is thirsty for the sacraments, know that Christ is thirsty for them. And we are thirsty for them, and we welcome them. We welcome them, that no one is rejected, no one is shunned, no one is treated badly. We want them to be here with us. So let's celebrate this, let's pray uh, for these candidates and uh, catechumens, and, and thank God that we're being blessed. This is truly a blessing for us. This is truly a blessing. If somebody said, you know, I'm going to give the church a million dollars tonight, this is better than a million dollars. You got that? Twelve human beings. This is priceless. And, and God is blessing us. So we, we thank God. We rejoice. Uh, and I thank you for being a, a congregation that, that is so welcoming makes people feel so much at home. Well, I'm going to invite the RCIA to come up forward. They're teachers. And they're not all here right now, but there's a few here. And we're going to have dismissal. They, uh, they get dismissed uh, to go study the scriptures that we've just heard. Yeah. And this is great. We have men and women and children. Okay. My dear friends, today we journey to Jacob's well and there discover that Jesus Christ is the living water that quenches every thirst. As you journey towards as your journey towards initiation continues, look to Christ to be the way who leads to freedom from sin. Be assured of our love, care, and prayerful support. We look forward to the day when you will join us at the Eucharistic table. So now go in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you very much. Okay, so if you know of anybody who's interested in joining us, please please let us know. We're ready at a moment's notice.